Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 250 GTO Ferrari from Ravel in 124 scale. It's kit number 07077 in the Ravel of Germany boxing. It's seen a couple of releases, and it's considered a uh, skill level 5 kit for the advanced builder. This box was dated 2013, and it's still available on the market, but you find that it contains 202 parts, molded in white, black, metal, gray, chrome, and clear, with rubber tires and metal springs. The instructions are very clear, and you'll get three race car versions in this kit. The parts are free of most flash, but there are some injection uh, joints that are a little bit thick. And many of the parts will require some extra uh, time and effort to remove cleanly from the sprue. The motor is a very well detailed 12 cylinder unit and it builds up very uh, nicely. Uh, the uh, being in that this is a race car, uh, the interior is sparse. Um, there's not even door panels, but it's a race car. The body looks to be very accurate uh, and the lines are duplicated nicely. Uh, but the tires um, are pretty deeply molded. They, they actually look a little out of, out of place on this car. Um, but it's a racer, so <laughs> who knows? Maybe they take it on the dirt, too. Uh, the rims are multiple-piece units, and they're considered uh, one of the highlights of the kit. A quick search shows that uh, there are a number of aftermarket uh, detail sets for this uh, model so you could go crazy uh, detailing this one for a contest model when you're done it's about seven inches long two and three quarter inches wide and two and a half inches high here are the decals for this kit as you can see uh, it's a detailed set the color is great and the registry is very good I recommend that you use some of the aftermarket setting solutions uh, to make sure that these conform to contours and stick well to the body of your model. First thing I did was paint all of the parts with a light coat of a good etching primer. Um, gray primer is a lot easier and covers better than black plastic so I recommend that just about any time you get a new kit you give it a good coat of primer for any parts that you're going to paint. Our first construction is of the motor, so pull these parts out of the kit. And the instructions are in five steps, but um, I'll just condense it down here. Assemble the block halves with the oil pan and the transmission pan, and paint that assembly aluminum. Now paint the starter black uh, with a mix of 50-50 steel and gold for the solenoid. Attach the distributors to the ignition block and paint that aluminum with black caps. Now assemble the six carbs and paint them a 70-30 mix of steel and gold. Paint the motor front black, the oil filter is orange with a steel mount. Now the generator is black and the water pump is aluminum. Decal number 23 goes on the filter and 25 goes on the water pump. The belt is flat black with silver pulleys and the valve covers are black with silver bolts. Now attach the distributor unit to the motor and attach the six carbs to the intakes and add the 12 velocity stacks to the tops of the carbs. At the front of the motor add the oil filter, generator and water pump then add the belt into place onto that. Install the finished front to the motor and add the valve covers into place. We'll start the front suspension now and note the circles here that indicate uh, where the sprue is mounted pretty heavily to the uh, chassis so you'll need to carefully cut those away there at the mounting points. Now to ease painting assemble the steering box and the A-arm mounts onto the frame first as it all is painted black. Now the spindles are aluminum and the brakes are silver with aluminum calipers. The A-arms are aluminum also. Use a pair of the screws provided and attach the upper and lower A-arm onto each spindle. There's a small tab on both the lower A-arm and the upper frame mount that the spring sits on. Indicated by the red arrows here, I used a dab of super glue on the frame mounts to hold the spring in place and attach the A-arm onto the mounts both top and bottom. The spring sits at an angle when installed properly. 
Now paint the sway bar black and install it on the pins of the spindles, but don't glue it there, just place it. At the arrows, use a heated blade or a screwdriver and lightly melt the top of the pin to hold the rod in place there. Now paint the radiator gray with a black top and a gold cap. Install the radiator onto the pins and on the frame. Find these parts for the rear suspension and paint all the parts black. Insert the axle onto one side of the brace and, the <coughs> and a leaf spring and then attach that to the frame. Now install the other side in place on the frame and the axle. Install the motor and finish that assembly now. First paint the drive shaft and the balancer black. The oil tubes are steel with silver caps and a 50-50 gold and steel mix for the clamps. Now slide the balancer over the drive shaft and add the small end to the transmission. The balancer goes to the differential. Install the motor to the frame on its mounting points and in all cases remember to paint uh, to scrape the paint or the glue off from any of the contact points so you get good adhesion. Now run uh, the exhaust through the frame and attach it to the motor. Attach the oil tubes in place on the motor and set this aside to dry. Get these parts out for the dashboard. Now paint the dash pod and the face of the instrument pod flat black. The small panel on the dash is aluminum with black knobs and use the decal map here to locate the instruments in the gauge cluster. Then attach the instrument panel to the pod and the face goes on the panel. The decals then installed and attach the finished unit to the dash. The seats in these parts are next up and the instructions uh, call, call out gray for stock and blue for racing. Uh, my reference photos showed uh, black seats so I did mine black uh, for the seat and frame. Then decals 37, 8 and 9 are installed on the seat for the belts. Now I tried to leave the belts a little loose to look more like uh, belts than decals um, but that's up to you. We'll use these pieces to start the fender wells in the firewall. Assemble the fender wells to the firewall and add the support bar. In the directions, uh, the, the wells are aluminum, but uh, the things that I've seen online show them to be black. So I painted the unit flat black, and the pedals are black with steel shafts. Now install those into place and add the dash to the firewall. Pull these parts out of the kit for the interior. And again, the directions have it the interior pan painted aluminum with gray carpet but my research showed that the average race cars were all black inside uh, to stop the glare so even the undersides of some of the cars I saw were blacked out so I assembled the trunk wall support braces vent tube gas tank and electric box and painted them all flat black on the electrical box uh, the top will be red with silver buttons and the brake handle is black now add the brake handle into place and add the seats into place next now uh, locate the vent tubes and we're going to attach the engine bay to the interior tub. Assemble and add the vent tubes to the firewall and decal 24 goes on the left side of the firewall. And note that the instructions have you assemble the steering wheel and then jump to the tires and back to the chassis. Uh, but this is confusing and I didn't see the purpose there. So we'll finish up the chassis and then go to the tires. It seemed to be easier to complete a full sub-assembly before moving to the next part. So finish the chassis uh, assembly now by uh, getting the steering column and the shifter uh, and paint those black. The steering wheel is wood tone and decal 22 goes on the horn. The rear shock parts are orange and mount the outer part to the wheel well on the tub and the inner part uh, of the uh, suspension there. Then paint the brakes disc steel with aluminum calipers. The front shock parts uh, are orange and install the bottom to the uh, A-arm and the top to the wheel well. Install the spring in place on the bottom and install the tub in place on the frame. Now assemble the steering wheel column and shifter and put that in place. Add the rear brakes to the suspension and paint the shift knob black with the shift pattern on the shift block of flat black. 
Now install that unit onto the interior and paint the exhaust steel. Add the tips and install those in place and then paint the skid plate aluminum and put that into place now. So that you get a good idea of placement, here's a close up uh, of the front suspension and the front end parts and we'll also give you a, uh, a close up of the rear end and suspension and the spring mounting points etc uh, for reference uh, in case you can't quite find placement. There you go. Now the uh, shocks and the brakes are installed in place on the front and rear suspensions and note the calipers on the front face the back of the car and the rears face the front of the car. The interior is completed now and assembled as a race car and it's it hits a very sparse interior but uh, that makes it very authentic. Get these parts to assemble the tires out and to give the tread a worn used look I pressed the uh, tire tread and rolled it on a sheet of 220 grit sandpaper on a flat surface. Now the rims are three parts assemble the front and rear with the mid spokes sandwiched inside and insert the completed rims into the tires. The tires aren't directional but they do have some scripting on one side so make sure those are out. And the front tires are thinner than the rear tires so note that uh, there is a difference between the two. The rims fit only the back or the fronts. Now press the tires onto the axles and add the lock ring and spinner cap to each axle. And here's a finished shot of what you'll have as a rolling chassis. And this can be set aside while you work the rest of the body. Gather up these pieces for the body and the whole kit has mold lines and some excess flash that will need to be cleaned up on the parts as you build them. The body will require some extra attention uh, and once uh, removed from the sprues uh, you can clean off all of the joints and make sure that they're um, blemish free but um, on the body you're going to want to use uh, like a 600 grit sandpaper to start out uh, and remove any of the parting lines and blemishes and then maybe finish up with a 800 or a thousand grit to uh, make it uh, contest ready. The uh, area near the rear roof uh, has some strong mold lines so remove the injection sprue from the window carefully and clean up the window area and that mold line there uh, near the top of the pillar. The front fenders also have some pretty heavy mold lines that run under the lights across the top of the fender. So um, as you uh, move up to that uh, section to clean it off, uh, just remember to, to preserve the contour of the top of the fender uh, and still get, uh, get that mold line off of there. Again, there's another uh, heavier mold line uh, towards the back and uh, the rear deck area and that's kind of tricky to remove but um, you might want to use a, a, a sharp blade to uh, cut that down first and then sand it smooth. Now we can install the um, the hinges on the doors, the trunk and the hood and install the front pan on the body now as we'll paint that whole thing as a unit for uh, a uniform color coat. Now find sand and look for any blemishes to clean up uh, and uh, watch for those parting lines. Make sure that they've been removed and prepare the car for primer. And prior to paint uh, I installed all of the panels and I'll paint the car as a whole unit so that the panels will match the shade of the car. With the car uh, in primer you will probably still find some blemishes that need to be cleaned up so uh, check it over very carefully and uh, fix any issues with or reprimer if necessary uh, using perhaps uh, some of your favorite filler putty. Um, once the body is correct then wet sand the whole thing uh, with a fine grit wet sandpaper and then allow it to air dry for, for color coat. The main color of course is Ferrari red and the interiors were flat black in the reference photos I saw and I used an airbrush for the main color and then hand painted the interior um, with some nice thin paint and it's now ready for decals. If you used a flat base coat like I did you'll need to spray a um, 
a thin coat of clear gloss so that your decals will stick. Use plenty of warm water uh, to remove the decals from their backing and, and on the body to place them uh, before you wipe them clean with a soft dry cloth to get out any water or air bubbles that are trapped. And once again, um, because of some contours here, I suggest you use a decal setting solution available on the aftermarket. I used some of the aftermarket adhesive foil to uh, highlight the trim on the car. And it's just like tape. You, you cut off a small strip, apply it to the area you want to highlight, and then you use a sharp hobby knife to remove any excess. Um, burnish it down and it, it looks pretty good, almost like real uh, chrome trim. Once you're satisfied with your trim and decals, let the decals dry overnight and then give the whole car a good overall coating of uh, crystal clear finish, uh, clear coat uh, to make sure that the decals and the foil stay in place. Find these pieces to install the front end parts and paint the light housing back silver with a black bottom. So we'll use some white glue on all the clear parts when we install those and insert the lenses into the housings and install them from the inside. Now add the light covers to the body with decals 33 and 34 on the covers. Paint the side marker lights turn signal yellow and the front marker lights silver on the back and install those items. Now insert the hood locks into place and leave the hood locks loose so that you can rotate them to unlock or lock the hood. We'll use these pieces to finish up the back end now. So install the trunk latch and the gas cap and install the tag lights. Paint the tail lights stop light red and install those and the backup lights are silver on the back side. I just used a sharpie for the window surround and installed it into place. Then remember we'll use some white glue to glue all of these clear lens pieces into place. Now we'll need these pieces for the door glass so use decals 36 on the glass and insert the small window first onto the track without glue and then glue the larger window in place on the track holding the small window in. Add the side latch to the small window and I use some Elmer's white glue to glue these into place. It's now time to get some final pieces out before uh, mating the body to the chassis. So use the uh, Ferrari stallion and install it into the grill and attach the grill to the car from the inside. Add the rear view mirror in place and the body can now be slid down over the chassis and carefully adjusted and wiggled into place. Now note that the rear vent placement inside the fender and the chassis is on top of the vent. Now we'll start working on the glass for the, the rest of the unit and I used a silver sharpie around the edge of the windshield and installed it with some white glue. Now add the door handles to the car, paint the mirror red and install it on the driver's door and pick either race or stock wipers and paint, the black, paint them black and install them. Here's the front end of the model of your iconic GTO racer and it sure is a stunning example of car design even back uh, from the 1960s. And here's the back end with a Euro plate on it. And uh, it certainly looks good in a racing uh, livery, doesn't it? There were just a few parts left over uh, in the kit box. Uh, the, the extra standard exhaust uh, parts were in there and some racing decals and some uh, and front wheels uh, that are not used in this build. And well, neither none of these parts really are. This is a race car and uh, that's what's required uh, because the interior uh, isn't built as a stock vehicle. So these are just parts left over from different boxings. Well there you have it. This is a great model of the iconic Ferrari racer but the kit's been around a while and the molds are starting to show their age. Uh, some of the parting lines and panels don't fit quite exactly right uh, but with a little work you can make them just perfect. The motor's detail builds up nicely, uh, but the hood opening, of course, is pretty small, so most of it is kind of hidden. The interior is blank as it 
should be for a race car and the suspension ended up being stronger than I would have suspected um, so that's a good design the body had a few issues uh, like I said with door and panel fit um, but you get three choices uh, of, of decals for race cars so one of them is actually a silver colored car and I thought about it but hey Ferraris are red right one bad point uh, I thought were the tires they they looked a little bit unrealistic for uh, a race car uh, but um, maybe there's different versions of that uh, depending on the race type um, overall though this is a great looking kit uh, it's a challenge for the builder especially some of the smaller pieces um, but uh, nonetheless if you can find one of these uh, great kits out on the market and they are available then I would buy one and put it on my shelf we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and always at our website www.rideonreplicas.com thanks